So my mom had four kids about the time that she was 23 years old, all within five years. We struggled financially and educationally, and eventually every last one of those kids failed a grade. Me, I was a troublemaker out of all of them because I kept on fighting. I habitually got suspended. But I can tell you right now, the reason why I was suspended was simply because I was angry, scared, and embarrassed. I was tested for special education. I got labeled, but I didn't get put into special education simply because I had a proctor, this person that was assessing me who made me want to try. So I tried. And it was something about this man who I didn't know that told me, you can do it. So I did. He'll never know how powerful his words were. This is why I take that third grade Eli into the DNA of my educational approach. And when I was in my master's class, this really came in handy because I taught at a school that was 99 something percent black, labeled underperforming, low achieving, and one of the worst schools in the city. A school with these absolutely amazing, beautiful kids, but for some reason, some of them did not have the ability to see past their anger. These bright, intelligent, beautiful kids who to me, didn't sit into anybody's achievement gap, but were absolutely geniuses at getting on your nerves. <laughs> These kids were labeled just like I was labeled. And I guess this is why I don't like labels to this day. Because it's absolutely heartbreaking as a special education teacher to look into the eyes of your students and to ask them, what does it really mean to you to be in special ed? Maybe some of these kids are just out of the box thinkers. Like me, I'm an out of the box thinker. As a matter of fact, I'm getting ready to take you out of the box and relate education to a field of science called epigenetics. Now, epigenetics simply means the molecular memory of our past and it can get kind of complex. And since we are all teachers here, I know I absolutely have to have some intention. So my intention is to simply spark curiosity and my success criteria, I will be successful if I can get you to think or maybe say, I never thought of it like this. But before we go on this journey of epigenetics, I really want you to understand that this is probably something that many of you already know. Now take, for instance, my main man, James Baldwin, the super author, prolific thinker. He talked about epigenetics without ever saying a word when he said, we are our history. We carry our history with us. And if y'all got some hip hop heads in here, I think I see a few. As a matter of fact, Kendrick Lamar talked about epigenetics and he never said the word either when he simply said, I got, I got, I got, I got loyalty, got royalty inside my DNA. Cocaine quarter piece, got war and peace inside my DNA. I got power, poison, pain, and joy inside my DNA. I got hustle, though, ambition flow inside my DNA. I was born like this, it's born like this, immaculate conception. Kendrick Lamar explained epigenetics perfectly. We have our ancestors' history inside our DNA. We are our history. So, epi. Epi means on top, and genetics means heritable characteristics. So we have our experiences on top of our genes. Now there's really two processes that I really want you to understand. And this is one process called methylation. And this is if you have an event, an experience, or a traumatic event or something, and the, this group called methyl group can tag itself onto a gene and then it can modify the way the genes are expressed. But there is this other process called demethylation in which that tag can be taken away. Now, I really didn't understand this or have a deep dive or, uh, of this until I went to Charlotte Teachers Institute and I took a seminar on epigenetics and there I was introduced to this lady by the name of Dr. Rachel Yehuda. Dr. Yehuda, she studies 
children of the Holocaust survivors. And what she, what she suggests is that trauma can be transferred from generation to generation genetically. And this is called transgenerational epigenetic effects of trauma. Now, some of y'all out there know who I am. But if you're anything like me and coming from the place where I come from, you have to absolutely understand that you have to ask, what does that do for the African-American experience if trauma can be transferred from generation to generation? But since we're in school, we want to make sure that we talk about stress. Well, we want to talk about stress simply because we do understand that schools can be absolutely stressful environments. And if we talk about stress, we want to talk about cortisol. If we talk about cortisol, we have to talk about the flight or fight response. And if we talk about the fight flight response, we can associate it to PTSD or a traumatic event. But there's also other implications with this. It goes into low birth weights, preterm birth, diabetes, and obesity. But one of the things you gotta understand that if you talk about the stress, you will have to talk about 246 years of enslavement and another 100 plus years of Jim Crow. And before we get to the healing environment, what I gotta say is what are those implications that can be made if we carry that kind of history within our DNA? And maybe we have to rethink about what we're saying about our students, that there might just not be a deficit or the inability to achieve. But now let's get back to the healing environment. Because Dr. Yehuda talks about that demethylation process. The demethylation process talks about the healing. And if there's going to be an environment that's going to be conducive to healing, then the environment has to have optimism, it has to have self-awareness. And to me, the biggest one is the flexible and imaginative thinking. Now, this is not a far-fetched idea, nor if this is an auditor box concept. As a matter of fact, this simply suggests be best practice. As a special education teacher, I see far too often the student, like the third grade Eli, who comes to school suffering from low academic esteem, scared to death to read, and the all too common, I got anger issues. So when I teach, I make sure that I establish positive relationships. I make sure that I identify the strengths of my students and build on those because confidence means something. Because I come with a deep understanding, a molecular, epigenetic, and personal understanding that some of the things that we are seeing inside our schools simply may be symptoms of something far more insidious that's happening currently historically, and maybe simply not getting addressed. So when I'm around my students, I make sure that I have positive energy. I make sure that my students understand that I love them, and that love does not mean a pass. As a matter of fact, love means accountability, that they take the time, like I take the time, to ensure them that I care, that I believe in them and that they can rise above any of their circumstances. Now, truthfully, I am well aware that epigenetics is just simply a big fancy way to say that we need to take our history into consideration when we're assessing our students and assigning gaps of achievement. But if we truly and truly want to be a transformational district, if we truly want to dive into the depths of equity, then we have to focus on our students who have been historically and systematically marginalized since the inception of this institution. I know for a fact that we can do it. Because if we lift those students up, we'll lift everybody up. Thank you for that. No, <laughs> well, I know for a fact that we can do it because teachers are absolutely and unapologetically powerful. Thank you. <laughs>